going? My name is uh, Mustafa, and this is my 2005 Dog Viper. My Instagram is uh, mumu underscore srt. Ever since I was a kid, I've been dreaming about these cars. Like I saw, I think the first time I actually saw a Viper, it wasn't even in person, it was inside of the Drake and Josh movie. So I saw that, that Viper that they stole from Tony Hawk, and I just thought like, man, why, like, what, what, what's so attractive about that car? Like, why do I want it so bad? And I knew that since I was like eight or so. And I mean, I started off my car journey with like JDM cars. So I had a WX whenever I first started. After that, then I got a 99 C5 that I split with my mom because she wanted to like have her own Corvette. But I essentially ended up crashing it. And having that Corvette kind of gave me an idea of like, man, like American cars are really like something kind of special. Although I love the Japanese cars and the Euro cars, like the American big block V8, just like, just like the power behind it just kind of spoke to me. So I ended up selling my WX and using the down payment, using the money as like a down payment for my scat pack. And I had a Challenger scat pack. It was the automatic, which I was kind of sad for for a little while. But at the same time, like it was like probably the one of the fastest cars that I owned, at least up to that point. And I did a cam, E85, headers, like, I did everything that I could to it and it felt amazing but for some reason I felt so like disconnected from the car and then I started looking and I saw the prices for Dodge Vipers were down and they started to slowly go back up and I thought to myself hey like if I kind of like just go for it then maybe I'll have an opportunity or a chance so I ended up I sold my scat pack to someone after a month of them owning the car they actually totaled it because it was making a little bit too much power for them and after waiting maybe two or three months after selling it, I was feeling like super stuck because I couldn't find the right car. And I saw this one out in Arizona. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna like drive there, go with my dad and my, my coworkers. And then just ended up just going there, seeing that the car was like perfect. And the next week I went right back to Arizona and I just uh, signed all the paperwork and the car was mine. And actually the first time that I picked up this car, I had, driven it around with the air conditioning on and I guess something with that had the car like mess up so essentially my ignition switch broke down like it broke down the entire car so I was stranding on, stranded on the freeway in like 110 degree weather in Arizona and I didn't have the car for like a month so happily now I have it at least in my hands but what like <laughs> wow <laughs> but what truly inspired it was kind of just like the rawness along with like the fear behind it because I always thought I was able to be a good driver but if I could drive this then I would be able to know that like I'm at least like you know pretty decent at driving and driving this I started to realize how much it was like like important to me to have a car that I could like truly fear feel and like like just feel like the power and be kind of scared of it because the scat pack you don't feel it it's too new and it's just like it feels like you're just driving like a toy no matter how powerful or anything that you make to it but with this, it's like even going 60, you kind of get scared of it, you know? <laughs> like, but other than that, uh, besides that, like, I think what truly, truly inspired me to get this was just, I had never seen another one, you know? I seen maybe two or three. And this is the first convertible I had seen, and it was in person. And I just kind of fell in love. And that Drake and Josh movie kind of showed me. Same thing with Fast and Furious, even though I, I don't want to be associated to the guy at the, in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> this car makes around 500 to the crank and I think 525 torque and it's an 8.3 liter V10 and one thing that's actually pretty funny about this car is that most people won't tell you and please do not go up to anybody else's car and just open their hood but the hood release is actually right here and if I didn't unlock it okay it's still unlocked you can release the hood from right outside of the car there is the 8.3 liter V10 and as for right now, it's all stock. I think factory came with can in intakes and it has this little logo right here. So I, I don't think that that's modified, but I could be wrong. But essentially from what I've done to the car is that I got it and it still had BC coilovers on it. So I was just like, why not? And just slammed it like as low as I could without like rubbing like at all. It still rubs a tiny bit, but I tried to stiffen it as much as I could so that it just like looks okay. And then I know that there is no exhaust coming out of that tip right now. So what I did was I did a cat back straight pipe, but whenever I had it coming out of the tip, it was so loud that literally every single person next to me was staring. And I'm not really a fan of, like, I don't hate cops, but you know, cops don't really like loud cars. So I just had it dumped to the, to the floor so that at least whenever I'm like idling, it doesn't sound like I'm just like an absolute like idiot, you know? And, but in terms of that, that's at least everything I did to modify the car. Oh, and I did get a D&D shift knob because uh, I, I the, I know someone there and they didn't uh, charge me for shipping. <laughs> and, and of course, like, there's, for some reason, 
I guess 2005 that these cars had navigation, but the navigation screen is like this big, so I don't really know how to use it. And other than that, I think that that's just Dodge being Dodge in 2005, trying to keep up with Mercedes because this is supposed to be like a sports car, luxury car, but you know, they're still trying to make it like as like basic and cost effective as possible. I don't really see too many people that have a navigation option, so I think it's kind of unique, but at the same time, like I could be wrong. Maybe they all came with it. But, and also the, the, the speakers that came factory in 2005 were probably amazing. But they suck now. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be able to change that soon. And I have a lot of plans for this car, but I didn't kind of grasp how expensive all the mods would be whenever I got the car. But hopefully, you know, it's a climb. It took me like four years to get the cam and stuff for my scat pack. Maybe it'll take like four years to even like be able to start like touching the motor at all. But proper maintenance, I think this car should be able to be pretty reliable. I've, I haven't had any issues so far besides the ignition switch. And I've heard these cars can last forever. I've seen people with one or 200,000 mile Vipers and I think I want that to be essentially where my car goes at. To be honest, I've been in love with this car. Like, uh, I haven't had too much at least of a downside to the car, except like really minor stuff. Like, there's some stuff that I think Dodge could have fixed. Like, first day I owned the car and I took it back home, the top broke, so I had to essentially fix the top because I didn't want to pay $1,500 for another top. And the shifter doesn't stay in the center of neutral. It's just like, if I put it to the left, it stays on the left. If I put it to the right, it stays on the right. And it's like, it's just like really small, weird, weird issues. And especially the fact this is also an old car, so maybe it's like not super like up to date, at least like being like tight, at least like in terms of the shifter, along with like the glove box is like coming loose and it makes rattles and stuff like that. But other than that is like, aside from that, if I take away all like those small things, like literally the perfect car i couldn't have complained i can com can't, can't complain about it to be honest like interior might be a little dated but it's 2005 like i'm not gonna judge it that hard my god that thing is still loud even on low uh, revs bro <laughs> look at all these freaking gauge pods like this dude's ready. <laughs> <laughs> There's a race car from factory, bro. <laughs> real talk, though. Real talk. Hell yeah. We're gonna get a little bit of uh, some, a little bit of driving, and um, maybe a small or uh, low revving pool. Hell yeah. Just because we don't want to like burn up the spot or get caught by cops. Yeah. Got the homie Justin taking pics. But yeah, off we go. This is my first time riding in a Viper. Hell yeah. Oh, that's clean. That's pretty clean, bro. That's really clean. Hey, <laughs> I like that. Okay. I can do without that can of Star sticker, but it's okay. okay. <laughs> BMW, bro. This is my, my 335i. Let's go. M54. <laughs> M54. You know, I got that uh, that uh, uh, JV4 verbal tune. Hey. <laughs> Just trying to get home to their kids. <laughs> They're hearing this shit. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this blasphemy? <laughs>
Sorry to the children that are asleep. Yeah, my apologies. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> well, that's about it for the driving footage. Hopefully you guys like the video. See you on the next upload.